Hi, my name is Mitar, and Yane is over there uh, preparing the beta um, version of the site to, for you to test. Um, so we will be talking about Node Watcher. Uh, but first, uh, I will go back and explain a bit uh, where we are coming from. So um, we are coming from WLAN Slovenia, Open Wireless Network in Slovenia. Uh, we started in 2009 uh, and then slowly growing uh, up to now. And very early, uh, we developed our own um, uh, network monitoring software and network growing software um, called Node Watcher. And now uh, we are uh, finishing the version 3.0, and this talk will be about uh, this new version and what is bringing it uh, to the world. Um, so, if you want to learn more about our network, you can do on the uh, our website. Uh, we ha also have two track installations. One is for uh, like managing the uh, network itself, growth of the network, and the other is of about all technology we are developing. So, any code, any tickets, anything about our what I will be talking today here, uh, you can get to on dev.vlan-se.net. Um, this is a bit how our network currently looks like. Uh, what you can see is that we have a part which is really a mesh network on the left, and then you also have a part which is very centralized, uh, if you look. And the reason for that is, is because we use a lot of VPN servers to uh, combine parts of the network which otherwise uh, don't have a visual link. So the topology of the network is a bit skewed, interesting, strange. Uh, but this also brings then some um, requirements to the um, monitoring software and also to the whole stack. Um, this is a bit how Slovenia looks like. It looks like a chicken. And we have nodes all around the place. We also have some uh, long links. Uh, so we here we are here now on the left corner uh, there, and there like uh, we have the same connection at this uh, venue. And then you can see, for example, a 50 kilometer long link to one rural area where they don't have internet and they're using um, our network to to spread the internet there around. Um, so node watcher. Um, Probably many of you use some, some kind of software uh, to um, you know, manage your networks. Uh, sometimes this can be a wiki, sometimes it can be uh, something more complicated, sometimes it can be a combination of multiple various software solutions. Uh, what we needed in our uh, community was something which is easy to use for end users. Uh, our target in our network was to really get end users, so people who don't have any technical knowledge, to deploy nodes. And we really uh, try to make this as easy as possible so that uh, they can understand what the network is about, they can understand what their nodes work and don't work or how they work, um, they understand what they are contributing to the network by maybe sharing their bandwidth and so on. Um, and this is what's like the, the main design uh, goals of our system. Uh, because of that, we somehow um, very early on deci uh, decided and, uh, and saw that it's not really possible to use various systems and just patch them together because users get confused. If, the, if something looks you know, different colors there and then you are redirected to another, uh, another site where you have graphs and then you are redirected to another site where you can get firmware or something, it really gets confusing. Um, another thing we noticed was that um, users make a lot of mistakes when they are configuring their systems. Uh, so we developed also a web-based image generation for uh, node. So you can uh, go online, you just say, say I have this hardware and you get a firmware image which you flash on your router, turn it on, it works for you. A bit all configuration already in. This was what we did in the past. That was 2.0, not watcher version. Uh, I'm just you know, giving big of a bit of background to understand what is now with 3.0. But the main uh, you can see that you have like a community who is deploying the new nodes. Then you have maintainers who are maintaining all the network or, or, or some of those nodes. Uh, and then you have this pipeline of, of activities done by the software. So one is the monitoring of the system, and another is then um, using uh, configuration provided by the user or by the system, generating new image and giving this new image to deploy uh, in the network. So this is like a pipeline. So the node watcher, uh, you know, tries to address all the needs over all the spectrum of this um, uh, pipeline uh, while the community takes the rest. So community then deploys the nodes, maintains the nodes, 
uh, grows the network. So how can the node watcher system support this community? But not only the community, so version 0.20 was very, very um, targeted to our community, but any community in the world. So that was the main question we wanted to answer with uh, node watchers 3.0 is how can we make a system which can address and uh, provide uh, needs of, uh, so it can address needs and provide solutions to um, many communities, not just ours. But we wanted to learn and like use experience we gained in our community. Uh, so the main question is, so one, one big uh, insight we got is that configuration should be split for, from the platform. So before, uh, what you could you do uh, or we did was you, uh, oh, we have an OpenWT, great, we can just you know, store or remember the configuration for UCI or some other uh, way, of, uh, way to store the information, but it was very, very linked to the hardware and platform itself. But what then if you want to replace this hardware with Ubiquiti or with Mikrotik or with some other platform? Uh, you have to recode, rethink, re find other ways of, of, of you know, entering the same configuration in the system. So we decided that we should split this. So the configuration of the network is independent from the platform. It's like, you know, this is an IP, this is the routing protocol, it uses VPN, uh, this is the subnet range it uses, and so on. But then when you want to compile it back uh, to the target platform, the node watcher does it for you. Uh, and this can then be you know, one platform or you can change it and so on. Um, um, so how it works, so you, have the, you want to generate this firmware image uh, and as I said before, uh, node watcher supports that you get a firmware image customized to your node with all configuration already in the system. So this is used by our image generation software. And so what we do is we simply um, you know, have for different tar target platforms, we um, translate configuration into the, uh, this um, configuration, um, target configuration and then inject it into the firmware. Um, what is interesting here, that these steps of, of um, configuration transformation can also be used as validation step. So it can also be used without having to really deploy a node. You can see, oh, does this uh, configuration really apply to this target platform or target device? And you can get immediate feedback in the web interface, does this uh, um, set of configuration really work? Because maybe it worked on different platform and now you're switching or replacing it with another hardware and it maybe uh, it doesn't apply there anymore. Uh, the initial uh, hardware had uh, you know, four ports on LAN, and now the new hardware has only one or similar things. Uh, so this can also be validated while doing this um, configuration transformation. Um, so how does this work? So as I said, we really wanted to make Node Watcher applicable to any network in the world. Um, community, mesh networks, bigger, smaller, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't really care. Um, so we really made everything modular. So also this whole transformation cycle is modular. So you can add your own platforms, you can add your own um, uh, then transformation models, and then also the firmware builders. Uh, for all of these steps, or like uh, when, when needed, we use Docker to make uh, reusable image, uh, images and containers uh, for, uh, for example, for firmware builder, we provide already made Docker images. So if you don't really have to even compile um, your firmware image anymore, you just download Docker uh, on your server and run it. This really makes it much faster both to share and reuse images. Uh, otherwise, it's really uh, sometimes pretty tricky, especially uh, for novice users to you know, get OpenWT to build and, and you know, compile and get all dependencies. Uh, and we wanted to address this as well. So our system is somehow uh, official use is to use Docker to, uh, for different of those uh, um, components. Um, so if we go from the left to the right, you can see um, this platform independent configuration. We developed um, uh, SQL uh, extension or like a, on SQL based um, extended uh, model we control a system based, based in Django, which allows uh, very uh, extendable and modular uh, modules, models. So if you, use, if you use Django or any other model view controller, you might notice that when you define the module, it's rigid. You can define which fields it has, and that's it. 
Um, but that's really problematic if you want to create uh, something, I don't know, um, if your community wants to add an additional field because, I don't know, um, the node information needs to have a phone number or you want to have Skype name or whatever you want in your network for that node. Um, and that's really hard. You have to modify the code, you have to uh, make it, uh, you know, all the schemas passing, migrations and things like that. Uh, so we address this by creating this system very modular. So different code modules can add to any existing table or module additional fields and it and just works as, as uh, Django or, or AM works. So you don't really have to uh, think about that much more. You just, you know, do sim similar or same um, Django queries as you did before, but all the modules you load in the system as code can extend those and add more. So they can add more to configuration or also other like monitoring modules and other modules which I will talk a bit later. Uh, so then, again, when you transform each module, so for configuration, um, we are not uh, linked to only one uh, routing, routing protocol. You can use whichever you want. If the module is missing, you can you know, create a module, add it to the system, and then everything else you can reuse, uh, and then you have your you know, personal favorite for the routing protocol. Um, so we have, we provide already some set of devices uh, and, and, and description, descriptors for those devices. Uh, like, you know, and descriptors can be you know, how many LAN ports they have, how, which uh, Wi-Fi cards, how many antennas, and th things like that. But again, this, you know, can just be extended. And, you know, with the growth of the community, um, we will have more of those available. Um, so, and as I mentioned before, we have then these firmware builders and you can combine these together so that you get this firmware image with all the configuration already in. Um, again, this is modular, which also means it's optional. So if you don't need these features, if you don't need part of these features, for example, maybe in your uh, community network, you don't build firmware images and you don't make them uh, customizable, no problem. You can still reuse the same st steps. You just don't you know, use the module for firmware generation. You can still store the configuration there. You can still do other steps like validation and uh, monitoring, but you don't have to build images. Or you, know, you maybe want to build same image for all devices. That's also possible. So it's really, you know, however you want to build these modules together. Uh, this is like a, you know, um, overview of what is possible uh, to what extent. Um, so as is mentioned, so the next step after you build the image, after you deploy the node, is to monitor this node. Um, having both both things. Um, uh, both the configuration and monitoring in the same system is really interesting because it brings you a possibility that you can match and verify does the monitored data really match what it should be there. I have a configuration and I can monitor the node and I can see does this monitored node really um, you know, match what I expect there to be. You can, by that, you can see, really see and find uh, configuration mismatches. You can see if maybe some community member moved the node to somewhere else and reuse the hardware and didn't really update the uh, configuration and you m notice, wow, this is a mismatch uh, and things like that. Uh, people uh, like to reuse hardware uh, and sometimes they forget to change some settings and so on. Uh, so you can really see this. Um, things happening, you can see if things are failing, and, and also very interesting is if the node is failing, then you can just rebuild the image for new device, flash it, go to the location, replace it, it will work the same as before because you had a configuration, you then take the broken hardware home, and then you can analyze it in time and piece wide break. You, didn't, you don't have to do it on the roof, you can just replace it with new hardware and you know that it will work the same because you had configuration stored before. And monitoring told you what kind of error it is. So you had, uh, you had knowledge about, oh, is this, this is something, you know, configuration error, logic error, software error, or, or hardware failure. Um, and this automatic detection of errors in the network is also useful because it also teaches the community um, how to solve things. So once you detect error, you can also add, um, you know, nice messages and instructions how to address common errors. Um, and then they can start um, fixing those um, by themselves. Um, 
So uh, how we gather data from the nodes, again, this also is not modular. The node watcher can uh, read from many sources. You can add also your own sources. Uh, we provide node watcher agent, which is very small uh, C-based uh, agent on the node. So that's really um, um, small. It uses UBAS for communication and JSON then. So it's like, um, it pushes all the data from, from monitoring into UBUS, and then UBUS uh, sends it as JSON HTTP uh, uh, node. So it's like inter interoperable with other OpenWRT um, you know, architecture inside. You can use bigger things like SNMP uh, if you want, uh, and things like that. It doesn't really matter uh, from the point of Node Watcher. Um, ah, and yeah, and. Uh, uh, what is also interesting is it can also be pull or push. So uh, by default, Node Watcher will connect to the node and gather data. But if you really want, you can also configure that the node um, co uh, connects to the server and pushes the data. So sometimes this is preferred in some networks because they don't have all the nodes um, connect, uh, co uh, in the same network. They don't use VPN. Uh, maybe they don't have uh, public IPs and things, things like that. Or they do have, so they want to push instead of pull. Um, we prefer in our network um, uh, the server pulls the data because uh, it's more decentralized. Like the node exposes data to everybody, and then the node watcher or some other system can read data from. Uh, if you do push, then every node has to know where to push. And then if you move the server or the server fails, it's much harder to uh, update configuration, um, um, this pushing mechanism. Um, but yeah, both is possible. Um, what is interesting, so we also tried and played uh, a lot with adding external sensors to the nodes. So once you have this platform for monitoring the network, you can also add external sensors like uh, you know, pressure, air pressure, uh, temperature, and noise, and other stuff. And the same then pipeline can collect this data and store it in the same monitoring system. Um, so as I said, for example, external sensors adds data, feeds data to the uh, node watcher agent. Uh, you know, your, your routing protocol or two, if you have a node, can all um, send this data to the agent. Agent uses UBUS and then um, HTTP server to send this data to the a monitoring uh, pipeline. And then monitoring pipeline is again modular, can read in multiple steps different things from routing information, um, can read this data of sensors and other stuff. Um, and then can also, what is also interesting, we store all this data in time series format so that you can go not just read current data, you can go and read all the data from the beginning of the network and move and see how it grows, what were the issues, uh, and try to resolve them. This really um, proved the most important thing, I think, in our network was how to debug issues was that you could you know, go in the past, go into the history, and see the data and behavior of the networks, network as a whole, and also your nodes in the past. Uh, so for that, uh, we developed um, what we call data stream uh, time series uh, store, which is like, um, in fact, just an API, how to store it uh, with a um, unified um, way into the database. Uh, in our network, we use MongoDB to store. Uh, if you prefer some other no uh, um, storage engine, you can also support that. Um, but currently, the Mongo is what we use. Um, and the main idea is, yeah, you store the data there, and you have this API layer uh, that you can then read from and, and draw graphs. And you can, like, you know, um, again, be modular so you can change how you store or change how, how you visualize the data. Uh, we provide, again, just some defaults uh, we like. Um, so how we do that, for, uh, for example, so if you know there can be a lot of data in the time series. So we try to, really to make it very compact format. Uh, so we store, um, so when the, uh, every node se uh, get, uh, sends the data uh, to the server, we store this uh, in the database in various granularities. So we store it at the beginning in the minute granularity. For example, if you read every minute, then five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, and so on. This allows you to zoom in and out in data in real time. So because the granularities are pre-computed for you when, you, when you want a big picture, you can really see the whole year. And then you can zoom in, and you can see the graphs at the lower granularity, um, or higher granularity. So the reason um, 
this is sometimes hard, and especially what we didn't like with R uh, RDD and other software was that you lost information. When you, when you zoomed out, what they gave you was always just an average of previous points. For example, you had one day of five minutes measurements, and then when you zoom out, you got one point for that one day. And that was average of those points of that one day. But that's really bad, because you don't really have any feeling is, you know, what is the extent of data? Like, what is the minimum and maximum average? What is the standard deviation during that day? So what we decided is that we, when we compute um, lower granularities, when you zoom out to day and, and hour and, and week um, you know, time spans, uh, we want to preserve those and also visualize them later on so that you can see, OK, you know, um, temperature was moving that, there, but then you know, it, that was the extent during the day in which it moved, or, or memory usage, or number of clients, or throughput, and things like that. Uh, when you, you know, <laughs> throughput of a node um, over the day as an average is pretty different than throughput of a node um, when you look at extremes. Um, so that's what we say when we say different granularity, we have to compute all these different um, metrics or, you know, statistics. Um, yeah, and there are you know interesting problems like how you do things about um, how you detect the set of the node, how you uh, do uh, rate limit, uh, rate derivation. For example, bandwidth. Bandwidth has this problem that you get a number of bits. Um, um, so how many uh, you know um, how much data is sent to the interface? You get this as a you know increasing counter. So when it overlaps, you have two options. One is the counter overlapped or it was reset on a node. So what is, is needed to know how to resolve this when you're storing the data is that you have to compare the knowledge of uptime with the knowledge of, of, of this counter, which was increasing, to know which of these two situations uh, there was. Again, this is something we support uh, through the API uh, so that we know, you know which um, counter uh, overlaps were because of the set of the node and, and, and which was normal behavior. And this is again important for debugging because sometimes you debug something, something which is not really a problem otherwise. So as I said, when we visualize the data, we, we, show, it, we show this data in various forms. For example, here you can see um, link quality through time zoomed out. And you can see the black line is the average, but then you have also the, the extent of this link quality during these periods. So you can see that you know, the blue line was more or less up all the time, even the extent was always up, but then the blue, the average, so the inverse was always good, but the inver uh, average link quality uh, was pretty moving up and down. And even you know, inside of the average, the black line, you see the gray line, is really big. So it, it means that this uh, link quality was very bad, very fluctuating, you get immediate insight uh, into the situation. Uh, and if you imagine that you would have only black line there, it would be much harder to understand. Um, yes, and below you see the, you know, the, the whole picture so that you understand um, where we are in this time span and so on. Um, but this is, again, just one of possible visualizations. You can play with others as well. But the main point is you have data to do that. You don't lose it, you, you, it's prepared for you, you can zoom in and zoom out. Um, okay, this is more or less about Node Watcher um, 3.0. Um, if I recap, so the main ideas are making it very modular, custom, um, adaptable to different um, community networks, different networks, different needs. Um, we are currently in a stage that we re-implemented everything from 2.0 into 3.0, but in modules in this modular approach. Uh, and now the idea is, you know, the different communities maybe try it out, see how it works, uh, add their own modules, their own special needs, and, and then we get this um, interesting set of modules that other new, maybe new networks can then choose from and decide how they want to run the network. Uh, instead of having to develop the whole system just because you want a special feature, uh, you can re you know, reuse most of the system and then switch those in and out you like or don't like. Um, as is mentioned, so um, to, in our network we, we use VPNs a lot. So I will also mention now a bit uh, uh, one other project called Tunnel Digger. 
uh, which uh, we developed also uh, and as a replacement for OpenVPN. So in, in Slovenia we are lucky because we have a lot of fiber in cities, in, in homes. And once you have a lot of fiber, you discover that OpenVPN is very slow. Uh, you cannot use the whole fiber using OpenVPN because there is too much context switches in the kernel, um, between kernel and user space. Um, and it just, you know, it's too slow. Even if you uh, disable all the encryption. Uh, on the other hand, kernel has um, tunnels, uh, support for tunnels. So uh, like uh, L2TP version 3 tunnels, which are like set the wire tunnels um, over UDP. Uh, but the issue there is that they're just tunnels and you have to manually configure them if you want to work with them. Uh, so there is not really a good broker system. So we developed a broker system uh, called Tunnel Digger, uh, which uses this layer two set of wires to connect those nodes together automatically. Uh, it can traverse nets, uh, it can uh, do a PET MTU detection uh, to know, you know how much the, uh, should be the uh, MTU size on, on all, in, all interfaces. And, uh, but the most important thing is that it uses the tunnels, which are in kernel, no context switches, so the throughput is really amazing. There is no encryption here, because it's really just to sell the wire. If you want encryption, you use IPsec or something similar than to do encryption or authentication. This is really just a broker, which means it is like, you know, there is a server, this is a client, if I can connect there, there is a link between them over the uh, VPN. Um, and then everything else is on top of this. For example, in our case, we use these links to create you know, VPN links, and then we use um, routing protocols on top of this to determine how to route. Should we route over wireless, or should we route over, over the link, uh, VPN link? Yes, that's it uh, from my side about uh, NodeWatcher 3.0, uh, our tunnel digger, uh, other technologies we are developing here, reasons for them, uh, and and um, what's uh, you know what's new. Um, so we hope to release it today, but we are not yet there. So, but it's there. It's a beta. So Yane is preparing the beta. It's on. So if you go to uh, I don't have a slide for that, but if you go to beta.vlan-se.net, you can see how current version looks like. Uh, that's our future version. You can play with it. Uh, I don't think that if you register now, uh, I think we disabled uh, creation of new nodes um, because it's beta and it will be erased anyway uh, uh, regularly. But you can, you know, get a feeling how it, how it behaves. Um, um, but yeah, so hopefully, like soon, very soon, we have the official release. Uh, if you're interested in anything uh, all about the project or want to contribute to the project, uh, use it in your network. Have any insights or stories you want to share? Please come to me afterwards, or like maybe we can also have a discussion now. Um, yeah. <laughs> any questions? Does anybody use uh, CloudWatcher? Uh, out of your community? Um, so the issue with NodeWatcher 2.0 was that it was almost impossible to customize to your local community. Uh, so what happened was that the um, community from Croatia is using our own installation to, for their own network. They don't even, <laughs> uh, the, uh, which is amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, it shows this limitation. It's really hard because it's, a lot of things was hard coded to how we're doing things. That was like our primary motivation because people approached us, tried to use it, but then you know, f all, all the, from the simple things like graphics to the decision about routing protocols, IP allocations, you know, things how we do things uh, were hard coded there. Uh, so with 3.0, that's exa exactly the the main. Um, Motivation is to yeah, make it so easy, that, like make it easier for others to use. Um, so we hope to 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 to, to start doing that easier. The same for tunnel digger. Yeah, tunnel digger is used quite a lot. So um, uh, we like, I know this from the pull requests we are getting. So <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think um, some communities in Germany are using it. Um, a community in Auckland is using it. Um, uh, that's at least what I remember now from from yeah. But Tunnel Digger is getting much because it's a pretty simple and independent thing. So you know, if you need if you need a VPN solution, and from to our knowledge, it's still the only one like um, working uh, uh, L2TP broker 
open source solution there. Um, so yeah, we are getting uh, quite a lot of use there. Yeah, and yeah, feel free to try it out, both of them, yeah. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Can you show the beta deployment? Uh, yeah, I can show it, hopefully, in theory. So yeah, so um, currently yeah, there's no caching yet and things like that, so it loads a bit load. But the idea is yeah, you have the list of nodes, you have uh, things like I said, our system um, monitors the, the network, it tells you it's on or not, it tells you what is the status. What is interesting, for example, in our case, currently we're running two protocols in the parallel in our network, so we use Babel and, and OSR, so as you see some nodes, uh, let me see where can I see. Do uh, you know any node? Druga. No. Huh. I don't know. So so you have um, both both um, routing boards, uh, uh, protocols at the same time, and then we also capture the data about both um, Babel and and uh, OSR. Um, so that you can have it and visualize it. So this is, for example, interesting, especially now when we are tra transitioning from OSR to Babel, how you manage the network in, in, in this state. Um, so yeah, the knowledge watch can help you also there. So you can see um, as, the as the network and maintainers are porting to the new version of firmware, which supports both and so on. So you can like phase out and phase in the new system. Um, but otherwise, like feature-wise, I'm not sure how much you are familiar with NodeWatch 2.0, but feature-wise, it's you know, really you know, trying to be uh, you know, same as 2.0. So like you know, some stats about the network, um, things like events um, you know, for each node, what happens so you can uh, you know, s s um, follow the whole network or just your nodes, uh, network topology, um, it's, you know, it's now rendered in the client, not anymore a static image, so you can really um, you know, drill down and investigate the network. Um, we moved from Google Maps to OpenStreetMap for our node. A uh, network uh, map, I'm not sure if that was the best for thing, but it is at least um, ideologically the right thing <laughs> to do. Um, so, but then if you go to the node, um, um, so what's interesting, uh, let me see if we pick her. Uh, do you have any data here? So, yeah, so you see the, the map, you see the things like graphs. There is no data yet, I think, because it, it just started it, yeah? Yeah, so this is new. He just turned it on, so we don't really have any. In this beta version, we don't yet have any real data. Um, but yeah, otherwise, this is the yeah, like, you know, you have the, the graphs of, of various values. Um, available. Uh, I would have to log in for that now. Yeah, I will not do that now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hmm? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, as I said, uh, Django based, Python, uh, that's our main thing. More or less, uh, data is uh, sent with REST uh, to the client, and then JavaScript picks it up and renders. So, like the, this table is JavaScript uh, maps, everything is. So the, the Django gives you the, the OREM for data manipulation, um, REST, and JavaScript uh, you know, um, bundling, and then you get the JavaScript and then it speaks. Uh, so it's like a hybrid solution. Um, yeah. Any other questions? So yeah, you can also come later on, um, you know, talk in person, you can try things out and so on. Ah. So um, there is, uh, um, depending on which level of configuration you want, uh, there is uh, quite a bit of moving parts. So if you want both uh, film regeneration and and monitoring and you know um, uh, data stream, data time series, there are quite a lot of these moving parts. We try to make it very easy using Docker. So all of those are prepared as Docker images. So if you are familiar with Docker, it should be as simple as you know. Docker Composer up and you have it uh, ready. Um, if you're not familiar with Docker, 
yeah, then it's a bit more work. Uh, but yeah, I think Docker is amazing technology to learn anyway, so uh, it should be easy once you pick it up. Uh, otherwise, if you want to build it manually, yeah, uh, there is documentation how to do it, so you can read it through. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a set, you know, it's Django, HTTP, um, you know, Mongo, and different things to link together uh, to work properly. So yeah, so this, this is um, the tricky part, yeah. It's definitely not a software. Um, it's like even how, in some ways, it's also hard to de develop because it's a network managing software. So it's not something you traditionally run on your own personal computer. Uh, but then again, that's why the Docker is good because you can run it, you know, in Docker containers on your personal computer and fake this network environment, and then you can um, develop it. So yeah, it's a bit trickier. But yeah, Docker, Docker is solution here, and it's already prepared for you, both image generations um, and other images. Mm -hmm. to, to send the data to the yes. Yeah. Um, how is it called? Uh, Node Watcher Agent. Node Watcher Agent. Yes. So, and, and it's not really sending. So, what Node Watcher Agent is doing is collecting the data. Then it uses UBUS from OpenWT to add it to UBUS. And then we use HTTPD um, and UBUS to JSON uh, interface to create a JSON out of it. So, it's really. In, um, uh, just a collection agent. The rest is just reusing existing stuff from 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 OpenWT. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we work. So I have been in talks. So we are pretty involved in that. A lot of um, so um, uh, the format which um, the node uh, node watcher is using to read uh, this uh, like the JSON which the uh, node watcher agent. Um, is uh, producing is, is more or less NetJSON. Like it's, it, this is like this community involvement of how to bring all these formats together. So yeah, um, um, quite a lot of, um, I would say, input to the NetJSON was from what, how, how we are doing things. So now it's like the time to converge slowly and so on. Yeah, um, it's not yet there because the NetJSON is not yet finalized, but like this is this iteration. So um, we bring ideas in, then we iterate together and, and then we get back. Yeah. But that's definitely the direction to go, yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, thank you for coming, um, yeah, and see you around. <laughs>